Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new 65% aluminum kit from KP Republic called the INKC65. Uh, it does come in five different colors uh, of the pastel variety so they're all quite pretty. It's available in a green, a blue, a yellow, a pink, and a purple which I believe that's the one that we have today. Um, it is a VIA capable keyboard. It does have gasket mounting with an FR4 plate. It has a six and a half degree typing angle and it comes weighing in just a little over 1600 grams. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got inside. And first we're going to take a look at the bag of hardware that comes with it. We have a driver that I'm going to guess works for both the case and other screws. We have a JSD connector cable. Uh, it's probably used to connect the PCB to the daughter board. We've got a set of screws that probably go to the case as well as to the daughter board. We have a bag of gaskets that uh, are going to be attached to the FR4 plate uh, to give us the gasket mounting. We have four rubber clear bump ons that will be used as feet. We have our USB C daughter board. And we have a little metal badge that looks to be about the size as, or similar size as to the uh, daughter board, but we'll have to see where it goes. That's really cute. It's got the same little, well, a similar little piggy emblem on it. And here we see the FR4 plate with plate mounted stabilizers already installed, which are actually pretty decent. They don't have much rattle to them at all. And there we have the tabs where we're going to use to install the gaskets. Next we have all the included foams. We have a decently thick IXPE sheet for above the PCB. I'll actually go that way. We have what feels like a pour-on plate and PCB sandwich layer and then what we have feels like a pour on as well for the case and below the PCB. So we have a very uh, nice PCB with uh, a lot of individual flex cuts almost per key or at least for the majority of the alphas or at least all the alphas. Um, it looks like we do have a stuffed cap layout and Obviously, to note, there is no um, no LEDs. There, there does seem to be one LED at the escape key, and another one down here, which would be right above the right arrow key. And we can also see that we have the ability to use plate or PCB mounted stabilizers which I will probably um, change out for when I come back to this keyboard but today we're going to be doing a stock build so that we can hear exactly what it sounds like with all the foams and as was intended and here's the case for the INKC65 um, it's very solid now they use that new um, electrophoresis a process it's kind of like a electroplating from a little bit that I I that I understand though um, any metal experts out there want to correct me please uh, feel free to uh, we do have a cute little uh, weight already installed at the bottom and oh yeah there's the screws for the weight right there and it has the logo of the studio and there's where we have the spots for our bump on feet and we have a inner frame top basically uh, that works to hold in the plate and the PCB and obviously provide the gaskets. So these, these screws are apparently going to be very um, universal. Looks like they're case screws, but also they should work for putting in the daughter board right there and then 
I'm gonna assume that this is how that piggy goes, but we'll have to see if there's another spot for it. All right, so after taking the top inner frame off and inspecting it, both the top and the bottom are in excellent condition. I don't see a single mar anywhere. So I think we can go ahead and start putting this puppy together. Um, I know we're going to need these screws, so let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in the JST cable so I don't have to fish down in there once it's already in place. And always a good way to see is to look at the cable, see if it's on the bottom half. The pins are on the bottom half or on the top half. Um, and then just line it up so that you can ensure to get a good fit and not bend any of the pins. All right. So now we've got that in there. Let's go ahead and set this in place. Get our screws. All right. I like to just give them a couple of turns. Make sure it's in before tightening all of them. You want to make sure you got it nice and straight so that it's not misthreaded. All right. And there's no need to turn it. I mean, once it starts to push, you're good. All right, so it looks like it's nicely lined up with the port right there. May as well go ahead and throw in the case foam. goes and this is going to go through here if I know what I'm doing <laughs> all right so it looks like a bottom foam fits in there pretty good and I think this is the uh, cable for where we're going to connect it to the PCB all right but before we do that let's go ahead and build up the PCB so we're going to go ahead and take this lovely PCB I love how the copper traces come out. I'm still trying to understand why there's only two LEDs and there isn't an LED for the cam sock at least, but I guess we'll find out. Huh. All right, first things first, we're going to go ahead and lay down the IXPE foam. All right, so we're going to get this IP. IXPE. I don't know why I've been saying that wrong for so long. Get this IXPE sheet lined up nicely. Then we're going to go ahead and put on the layer that goes between the plate and the PCB. And then we're going to line up the plate. We don't have any screws to hold everything together, so we're going to go ahead and be using switches. Today, I'm going to go with, um, actually used these before. These are the, these are the Otemu Green from uh, KP Republic. I have a couple other switches I have to review still from KP Republic. I'd use those, but I've actually, I've, I've been using these a lot because I like them. I, I think they're a, they're a light tactile that has a very snappy um, bottom out, and uh, they're fun. And they sound pretty good. So I'll go ahead and start by loading up the corners of these. All right, we got the plate and the PCB core all assembled. Um, it looks like this is probably the only uh, layout difference option is you can do a step caps lock. I think the key caps out that I've chosen has that, but it may not, so we'll have to see. But once we're at this stage, then it is time to install the gasket socks. Basically, they've got a little slot. They go into each one of these slots, or these tabs that are coming off of the FR4 plate. They're pretty, they're fairly, um, fairly soft, so. So we've got all the gasket socks on the tabs for the PCB plate. 
Alright, so we've got all the socks and pleats, and we've got... They did leave us with some extra socks, so that's always good. So now it's the final countdown. Yeah, I know. I'm probably aging myself with that song. So first things first, we want to plug in the daughter board. Oh, slides it. And we've got a nice JST connector. All right. Do our best to keep it inside of the channel there. And we want to go ahead and line up the keyboard. It will fit into the grooves. I already made it. All right. Looks like we've got that. It's not moving. All right. So we seem to have a bit of a tight fit. I'm going to go ahead and start with the side screws. As it, those were the only ones that came attached. All right, now that we've got all the screws tightened down, all right, we'll just go ahead and install the bump on feet. Flip it over. So just as a note, um, I've tightened the screws so that it's the inner frame is flush with the the outside frame. But at this point, it doesn't. Even though I can see the gaskets, there's really no room for them to move as it's pretty tight. There's still a little bit of flex because of the per key flex, but it's not something that across the board. So. Just something I thought I'd mention. Also, I don't see where this would go. I don't know if this is like a charm for something else. I would like to think that it was something that you could add to the keyboard, but I did not see anywhere that this could go. There is two more screws left, but I really, I, I have no idea. All right, so for keycaps today, we're going to go with these, um, these are die sub. They're sold as colorful. I want to say they're a, they want to be a canvas um, clone. I'm not sure, but I've bought them a few times before, and I like them. They have the, uh, the step caps key, and um, I think that these, these pastel colors will look good with the uh, pastel purple of the keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up, and then we can get to the sound test. Alright, so it was kind of bugging me that I didn't know where the badge went, and it just did not dawn on me to take a look at just look at some other pictures and see that there was actually two screw holes um, on the top frame that you could screw it into uh, and because I I map I mean I, I can get away with three keys I've gotten used to it so as long as this one's delete and insert this one's home underneath the page up and end underneath the page down so and I kind of I like, I like the piggy. I think he's cute. Um, also, I found that not screwing this in as tightly as I had, I had pretty much turned it to where, you know, if I turned it anymore, it was going to start stripping. It was tight, but not too tight. But I just gave like a half a turn loose to all the screws, and I got a lot more flex. Now, obviously, taking out the foam that comes in here would give even more flex, um, but I found that it's definitely much better now also um i don't know i've tested these before but in plastic kits they seem to sound a little bit deeper but in this situation it sounded really really clacky now it does have a bit of a a hollowness a ring to it on this side it's not bad but it's not the same as this side but um whereas the otemu green uh, has served me well in some other builds it just i don't know it didn't sound that great in here so i went ahead i know i know I, this is just what i had handy this is a franken switch that i made call it starfish princess i guess it is the stem of an mmd 
linear princess as well as the 53 gram uh, dual stage spring and it is the housing of an aka starfish which off the top of my head i'm not sure what it's made out of but has a much better defined i mean i gotta say i, I really like for linear even the tactile one um, the stems that come with the mmd princess i've made so far quite a handful of franken switches using parts from these um but definitely the stem it's just uh it, it works great so i went ahead and loaded these up with the starfish princess if i guess that's a good name how about yeah i don't know, I don't know fish princess no i already did mermaid's tail see this is the other half of what i did with the uh, stem of the starfish and i i put a video out about this franken switch and I like this one, but they all have different tones. So anyway, I, I loaded these up, and I really like how they sound on this keyboard. And though not exactly the same, it sounds quite similar if I were just to put in some MMD Princess uh, linear. So if you're looking for a similar sound, I think the Princess Linears would do because the Akko Starfish are... Are no more they've been discontinued um, so I think this would be probably a, a fairly um, difficult Franken switch to make but I think that many of Akko's linear housings would probably do good be mixed up very nicely with the um, MMD princess uh, stem so anyway here we have the IKNC I keep wanting to just Throw those letters all over the place 65 um, it's available in five colors uh, I do I love this color uh, my wife loves it even more she's she really this one st stood out to her my wife very rarely will be like oh what's that keyboard I mean she'll see my keyboards and if I show her one she'll tell me what she thinks about it but it's rare that she just like what's that one and she saw this one and she was not only liking the fact of the little piggy she loved it it's got the little piggy down at the bottom and the little badge now that I've added him to the top frame. And she said that these colors look good, so it must be something from her design style must be rubbing off on me. Because I thought this would look clean. The white would mix in with the white and then the pastels would mix in nicely with the pastels. Because it was that or I was going to go with um, the gray, is it? PlayStation clones, I can't remember the name of them. Dual shot, dual shot, dual, I, I think that's dual shot, but don't uh, don't quote me on that. So anyway, uh, we have built an INKC 65. It is a, um, it's an aesthetically pleasing board. Uh, I know a lot of people are not about flex cuts. I don't mind the flex cuts. This one had a few, I won't say too many, but it, went maybe a little bit overboard with the flex cuts because I had to actually use um, my spudger on the um, on the on the plate on the FR4 plate to get to make sure that some of the switches went in all the way because I, I could get them in it wasn't a problem getting them in in the back but the front to get the uh, because it's got the actual liner the, the of the frame going around the key when I press it in it just pressed down so I would have to hold that while pressing it down but that wasn't that big of a deal um only one bent uh only one bent pin in the process uh, which is uh, i think pretty good <laughs> um any day that we don't break a hot swap socket is a good day here are my thoughts i like this keyboard i like how it looks i actually like the construction of it though i th i do think that it could use a force break i usually don't well, this is only the second one with an inner frame like this that I've built, um, but it, it it has a little bit of a ring to it, even though I've got all the foams in there. I, I am thinking that either a force break and or a combination with, say, like a PET layer down at the bottom of the case uh, would make a huge difference to stop that bit of hollowness or ringing. And I will say that for what this sells, if it was last year, I'd be like, 
And for sure, if this was a year or more ago, I would say this is a, a great value. But when nowadays you can spend under $100 and get something like this, I mean, I've seen this as low as 55 50, 50, 50 to 65 dollars is the average range that I see the sugar 65 in. Now, yes, it doesn't have fire, but in all other ways, I mean, I don't know. I just, I hate to compare, but in this situation, I have to because though I love the aesthetics of this, I love how it looks, and I'm mostly happy with how it sounds, except for what's going on over on this end of the case I I have a hard time justifying it because what am I getting out of here I don't have LEDs which don't get me wrong I don't have to have LEDs but I kind of like them I mean I do have an LED that's below the um, the badge and there's one underneath the escape key uh, still not certain why but there's not even an LED on the caps locks. Uh, so I'm just kind of, now don't get me wrong, this, that's a nice PCB in there, but both of these have FR4 plates. And this one is still stock. And not that I have to have a knob, but boy, do I love having a knob. So honestly, if it's for me, the choice between a knob or a badge, I'm usually gonna go with a knob because um, it's useful, I can use it. Now, between a badge and a screen, I could go either way because, I mean, that's more just aesthetics, but I am constantly using a knob. So, what does this one offer that this one doesn't? This one has VIA. What else, where do I get other plates? I know I can buy at least, um, I've seen PC and I want to say aluminum for the uh, Sugar 65. <sighs> I don't know. When the Sugar 65 is available in about, I think it's 10 or 12 colors. This one's five. Um, the Sugar 65 has LEDs, um, has a knob, is... Oh, they're very similar in weight. Um... I'm, I'm just trying to, I don't know. I'm trying to get where the value is. And that's where, that's why I brought up my wife. Because she, she's seen this board. It's actually right near where she sits down or was there for a few days. And she didn't once think twice about that keyboard. The minute that she saw this one, she was very interested. She wanted to hold it. She wanted to play with it. She really liked it. So, there comes a point where, you know, price and the value that you get for your money has a stopping point and then it starts aesthetics. So, for some people, aesthetically, I mean, this keyboard, I'm very likely going to load it up with one of my wife's keycap that she likes and... You know, let her let her use it. She's she's more for the. She uses a sixty percent. She doesn't use a computer too much, but when she's on it, she likes to have a decent keyboard. And um, I think um, I'll load this up with a keycap set that I know she'll like, and actually will match this colorway. And this will be her keyboard. But to her, this stood out to her more than any of the other keyboards that I have around. This one, a lot of it's done well. Um, I like the construction of it. I like the fact that, I mean, I would have eh, wished that it would came, come with the screw and stabilizers, but don't get me wrong. That's not one of my favorite parts of building a keyboard. When I have to put those on, I'm like, uh, I mean, I know it's part of the process, but I like that it had, you know, just plate mounted. I am going to come back to this board and I will, I will upgrade this board. Um, and put in screw and stabilizers. Hopefully, I think the plate has enough space for, for them to go through. Um, thankfully, I have a couple of different sets of screw and stabilizers. One's that the, can't remember the brand right now, but they're very low profile, so they fit on a lot of plates that may not have the cutouts because last thing I wanna be doing is 
you know, sandpapering off part of the plate <laughs> to make the um, screw it stabilizer fit because then if I ever want to switch to plate mounted for whatever reason, well, I done made it too big and they're not going to fit. So anyway, so I, 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 at a certain point, if, you know, if the keyboard is good and I mean, this one, it, it's got Via and Via recognizes it right away. I didn't have to load a JSON file. So they actually got you know, certified by VIA. Um, I yet to look to see if there's a QMK source. I wouldn't be surprised if there was. It wasn't listed as that. But um, I believe this is Y and R, which I've seen some of their PCBs before. So it could be the same company. I could be completely off. But whoever designed and made this, they knew what they were doing. I mean, there's there's no... I mean, I think that they should have included some gaskets, uh, you know, to put... Or, I mean, how is, have I seen, was it with this one or another board, that they actually just had some embedded um, silicone gaskets into the aluminum. So it's like, oh, okay, I don't even have to worry about it. Just put it together. Um, but something to act as a, as a damper so there wouldn't be that, that metal, it's hollowness. But like I said, it only seems to be, on this side because over here sounds nice so and the way that the pcb is designed it's beautiful so this keyboard is definitely well made and it's a good product and i just i fear that it's um it's a little out of time because what can be found nowadays i mean we've all seen what's going on in the market this past year the amount of keyboards that i've seen that are just like wow and then you look at the price and you're like, what? I mean, it's it's just amazing to see how far the market's come and how much more affordable it has become um, to enter the market with a halfway decent, somewhat custom board. I mean, a custom to the point where you can pick the case color and pick the plate. I mean this a year year and a half ago this just wasn't a reality you were looking at spending for the base three hundred dollars plus and that's without switches and keycaps so you know to, to meet something of this type of caliber and quality so to me this would have been a much bigger hit in as far as price to value comparison last christmas this christmas it's hard for me to say but then take that aside and say, hey, well, I like pastels. I like the two-tone color. I like the badge. Aesthetic-wise, I mean, that's where, you know, as long as two products are fairly comparable. And, I mean, honestly, you could say this one's actually superior because it has Vaya. But some people would probably be like, well, that one has LEDs. So that's superior because that's what's important to them. Important to me is Vaya. So this is definitely a keyboard that I could find myself using though right now i have another keyboard that i've become addicted to and it's uh currently my daily driver so i i tend i do try to run all of the boards that i review at least for a few days as my daily driver so this one will will get into the cycle um until before it becomes my wife's that is if you're looking for a well-built keyboard and it's aesthetics that matter and via matters well then you, you got a great package here um if you're looking for you know the best the most keyboard you can get for your money there are other choices but you're gonna have you know you're, there, there's compromises that you're gonna have to make because i mean like i don't have the iso version of the sugar 67 but i do know that the iso version isn't a full iso it just uses the iso enter but it's missing I think it's the split key over here for the small with the smaller shift. I think that's the key that it's missing. Um, again, don't quote me on it, uh, but it's not a full or true ISO board. So there are gonna be some compromises, but if you want something that is custom grade, that would definitely have cost, I would say probably twice of what it's selling for right now, um, if it would have come out last year, but made by definitely by, by people that know how keyboards are made except like i said this 
and I did take it apart and put it together just to make sure, you know, it wasn't anything that I was doing. The only thing that I could think of is that, I mean, I laid it as flat as possible, but the JST cable could be just be picking up this side just a little bit. That's the only thing I could think of. Um, the JST cable, in my opinion, is just a little bit too long. Like I would have probably taken off about a quarter to a half of an inch off of it because it does seem to, the connector is right around here and it did curl under. I flattened it out as best as I could, but that's the only thing that I think could be causing that issue over here. Now, it's not a major issue, and I know several different ways I could fix it. And like I said, when I come back to it, I, I will. I will make sure that this sounds a lot more even like the rest of the board. But the way that it is right now, loaded up with my Starfish Princess <laughs> um, Franken switch, I, it sounds quite lovely. And while I do like this keycap set, I don't know why there's such a gap with that step cap on. So I wanted to see if I still have this issue with the regular uh, cap sock key. So I gotta flip this over, I believe. Put this there. Yeah, see? So that's, that's just the key caps. This is a little off. It's closer to the edge. Now it doesn't hit, but it doesn't line up with the rest of these. All right, so like I said, a lot of what it comes to keyboards is what you like, you know, aesthetically and what works for you. So um, I think for some people, this is going to be a keyboard that they're going to enjoy because it's aesthetically pleasing to them. It, there's nothing wrong with it. I, it's just a pet peeve, but I really wish they would have put an indicator on the caps lock because I, especially on any VIA keyboard or QMK keyboard, I do my best to always, uh, whether if I have a num lock on an uh, 1800 or 98%, um, and I have a caps lock, I always like to turn that light to white, disregarding whatever colors, you know, might, you know, be on or set or no colors at all. But to me, if you're at least going to put a couple of LEDs, then the caps lock should be one of them. I mean, right now it's got it behind the badge and all right, with the blue, I guess I can see a little bit, but even then it's like, I can't see that much of it, especially once I go ahead and put in the keys. It's hard to even tell that there's a light on in there. So, I don't know. It's like either don't do LEDs or, or if you're going to do them, at least the caps lock. Maybe, uh, maybe I would have put four LEDs there so it actually been a little bit brighter or actually made some of that badge um, translucent so the light could actually come up through the badge. But that's just me. Again... My wife, who has the better taste in the family, I always defer to her when it comes to colors, when it comes to, you know, furniture, when it comes to laying out a room, because uh, she actually used to do it for a living, so she knows what she's talking about. She has a natural sense for it as well. So the fact that this keyboard stood out to her speaks to something that, I mean, don't get me wrong, I appreciate aesthetics, but perhaps it's because because I come from a more logical background and doing code and everything has to you know, be mathematical. You can't have any leftover sums. Everything has to be for a purpose. Um, I, I look at keyboards more as tools. Not that I don't want my tools to look nice, but um, I'm more function functionality over aesthetics. Um, whereas other people might be, I want the functionality to be there, but aesthetics is also important. And I get it because, you know, this sits on your desk. It's a, an extension of ourselves and our personality and what we like, what we don't like. So, um, I could see some people really enjoying this keyboard. Anyway, I want to thank KP Republic for giving me a chance to, uh, review the INKC65. Um, a VIA keyboard. Yeah, it's a YNRI little NKC65. One thing that is known, obviously, is that aesthetics are an important thing for a lot of people. But 
anyway I'm gonna go ahead and um, leave you guys with a sound test of this board loaded up with these uh, 1.4 millimeter um, die sub PBT keycaps colorful and using my starfish princess which is just a um, princess stem and 53 gram double stage spring inside of a Akko starfish housing um, and let's see I mean I think it sounds pretty good what do you guys think let me know down in the comments below let's get a conversation going until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on